All right, all right. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tony No Dimes here with Max the Animal. We got another week of football, so we got more price picks locks. We got another pick 'em draft coming up. But first, let's do a little recapping of last week. Yes, sir. How was um, your week? Oh, I was gonna say I don't know if we should call them price pick locks anymore because uh, they're not locks. I don't know. I think I mine haven't won all season. I'm not proud of it, but I'm honest. I'm an honest man. I'll let you know how it is. Neither of us gained any points from last week. I put too much stock on the Jags. It is what it is. I know I had Traylon Burks in there. He got hurt. I believe I had Javante Williams in there. He got hurt. I had a couple of tough, uh, tough, tough squares. Tough breaks. And then as for the uh, the pickums, I, I went two, two and one, so I pushed. Uh, Very even week for you. Yeah, I'll take it after the zero and five or whatever I had before that. So yeah, one and four zero and five, whatever my week was before that, is is a nice uh, improvement. Your boy went four and one again. Back to back week going four and one. You, you're doing good. This is a good format for you. Maybe you're just a good drafter. I am. Maybe you're a good gambler too. We don't know. <laughs> I can I'm only not, uh, I can only make right picks when I'm forced to take games that yeah, I don't like. Yeah, I'm not like. willing to give you that uh, credit yet. So, but we'll see how we do this week. Uh, let's start off with the prize picks plays though. We got two squares. You want to kick it off? Yeah, I will. I'm ready. All right. So my two square. It's a it's a quarterback play. I'm going strictly quarterbacks for both of these squares. Uh, the first one is Kenny Pickett, less than 200 and a half passing yards. Uh, his first real start of the season. He's going to go up against Buffalo's defense. It's a stellar defense. Jordan Poyer, one of the best safeties in the league, probably going to give him some trouble uh, when you know, anytime he goes to try and throw the ball. 200 and a half. Yeah, it's a low number, but I don't think he really gets close to it based off of uh, Buffalo's defense. And then I'm pairing that with Cooper Rush, less than 233 and a half passing yards. Uh, they're playing the Rams. And I just, he's been, Cooper Rush has been right around this number every week. And I just think this is going to be the week where, you know, that Rams defense is going to get the pass rush going and he's going to struggle a little bit. And uh, we're going to finally see them come down to earth a little bit because the Cowboys have been playing too well. Yeah. A couple quarterback fades. I like it. Especially the Rams. They, they need a bounce back in the worst Big way. Time. So for my two square, I like how you did that little quarterback play, the little quarterback duo. I doubled up on tight ends this week. I think you tried to do that last week. I tried to do it. It didn't work. I think I had a Gesicki one. I don't even remember. Maybe I had a Cole Komet, whatever. I'm going with Zach Ertz to have more than nine fantasy points this week against the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Zach Ertz is just a necessity in this offense. Cardinals, they're going to have to put up points because we know the Eagles are. And I, I like Ertz's fantasy points more than his uh, receiving yards, which is around 40 yards, because I think he's a big part of the red zone offense. So he could re realistically get this done in pretty much one catch, full PPR. Zach Ertz, love it. Revenge he's game, too. Big revenge game. I was going to say, if you don't throw that in there, you're crazy. I knew it when I placed it. It kind of slipped my mind for a second. But, yeah, he's going to want to get it done in Philly. Is it in Philly? I actually don't know that. No, this game's in Arizona. No, it's in Arizona. Don't fucking matter. And then on the flip side, going with the other tight end in this game, Dallas Goddard to have more than 10 fantasy points. Uh, he's been able to do this this last three weeks without even really scoring touchdowns. He only has one touchdown, but he's still getting a hell of catches. You brought up an interesting stat. Yes. Off air. You said he's leading the league in yards after the catch. Number two. He's number two. He's number two. Been Austin Eckler's number one, but Dallas Goddard, number two in the NFL with Yak. That's crazy. Crazy stat. Never would have thought. Never. So, yeah, I like that. That's actually a, that's a sneaky one. All right. My four square. I went with all receiving yards for this one. All receiving yards, huh? Yeah, I stuck with uh, so David Njoku had a hot tip that he plays very well against the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. If you go back to his history, I believe he goes for like 70 yards every time. How many uh, times has he played the Chargers? Yeah, like three or four times. It doesn't okay. matter. Uh, but 40 and a half receiving yards, we're going to take the more on that end. Then we move on down to Christian Kirk. Uh, he actually came very close to this line last week, uh, but it was kind of a stinker of a game overall for the Jaguars. I feel like they didn't really get anything going. They got no rhythm. I expect them to get back this week. Uh, that's why I'm taking Christian Kirk more than 63 and a half receiving yards. He's basically the number one option there. He's the only option in Jacksonville. Uh, we're going to continue this with Tyreek Hill. More than 70 and a half receiving yards. This is uh, not a revenge game, but I don't know if you remember in the offseason, Tyreek Hill, there was rumors he was going to go to the Jets. Uh, you know, he claims you think he has some bad blood with the Jets. Not, not bad blood, but like he claims it was due to, uh, you know, tax uh, purposes with Florida and New York, you know, the difference in taxes, which I, that totally makes sense. But I think he's just going to just going to rub it in their faces a little bit extra. Plus, Teddy Bridgewater is probably just going to lean on Tyreek Hill. Yeah, he's going to have to. And then uh, we got T. Higgins, more than 68 and a half receiving yards. He hammers this line every single week. And then there's the fact that the last two games they played against the Ravens, he uh, went nuts. I believe he didn't hit this the first game last year. But the second game, he had like 100 and... Well, now I have to look it up. I want to I wanna give you this number. We're not always about incorrect numbers, only sometimes. Yeah, so T. Higgins last year against the Ravens, he had 
15 targets, 7 receptions, 62 yards. So he wouldn't have hit this line, but 15 targets is very nice. That's insane. Then, then, second time they played them, week 15 last year, he had 13 targets, 12 catches, 194 yards. So T. Higgins, uh, look, a small sample size, but T. Higgins against the Ravens seems to be a, a healthy matchup for him. So we're going to take his more on receiving yards every damn time. I like that. Two times a year. I like that. I'm going to trail that later. I'm going to throw him in a couple plays. But for my four square... I got to split between two games. The first game is Panthers 49ers. I'm going to start with Baker Mayfield to have less than 191 passing yards. Okay, so he hit it last week against the Cardinals. Cardinals defense is booty, though. He didn't hit this line against the Saints and the Giants. And against the 49ers, 49ers have been the best defense in the league by far, hands down. People have not been able to score on him. People have not been able to pass on him. Baker Mayfield is having an atrocious season, and it's only going to continue. Their old line shot. 49ers defensive line is probably the best. He's going to be under pressure all day. Baker Mayfield absolutely stinks under pressure. He might get 100 passing yards. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the game Baker Mayfield Double digit passing yards. (laughs) Yes. Correlating with that, I'm going with Robbie Anderson to have less than seven fantasy points. Super low total, especially in a full-point PPR, but I don't give a damn. Robbie Anderson is just not a part of this offense. He hasn't hit it this last three weeks. Again, Cardinals, Saints, Giants, he's just been irrelevant. He's not going to all of a sudden pop under the scene against the 49ers. He's a one big play guy. If he gets it, he gets it. If not, he doesn't it. Yeah, that's true. So I guess guess he could get it because it's only going to take one play, but chances are. Chances are slim. For Mr. Robbie Anderson. The other game I'm pairing it with is actually that uh, the Steelers-Buffalo game. So you took less with Kenny Pickett passing yards. I actually have Pat Fryermuth to have more than nine fantasy points. I think there's going to be a lot of garbage time in this game. We could see garbage time right after the half. Steelers are going to probably fall down fast. They're going to have to do a lot of passing the ball to keep pace with the Bills. Fryermuth also a good red zone target. So he's really only a catch away from hitting the more on this. Uh, he also seems to have a good connection with the rookie quarterback. So I like Pat Fryermuth to have a pretty good fantasy day. And then I took the more of George Pickens, 36 and a half receiving yards. Uh, he's a big play guy. Again, not going to take a whole lot of plays to get this done. Kenny Pickett probably will struggle, but garbage time counts as normal time. You're depending on that garbage time this week. Yeah, I just think there's going to be a lot of it, and they're just they're going to have to chuck it. They're going to have to play faster pace than normal. They're 14 point dogs. Like, there's no way they're going to be handing the ball off that much. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to control this game. You know, their their defense is. I still like their defense, but it's it's not what it was last year. They're not going to be able to you know slow the game down, play the game that they want. Kenny Pickett's going to have to sling the rock so many times. So that's my four square. Yeah, I feel good about it. Try to keep it to, you know, only two games. I like how you go for the correlation there. You always try to correlate it. It worked once, so I'm just going to keep going for it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. You know, know, a little broke. All righty, so those are the prize pick squares. Uh, Those are prize picks entries. Make sure you head over to prizepicks.com or download the app. Promo code BDGE, and you'll get a 100% deposit match up to uh, $100 dollars for first-time depositors all righty you Let's ready move over to the draft portion where uh i've been struggling but there's no better time to get back on track do i go this first one. this week this week is your week to go first that's, that's dope all right i'm gonna start us off i'm gonna go with right away give you my favorite the rams minus five and a half okay i think uh they've been playing like shit Listen, this is the Super Bowl champions. They need to come out, and they need to turn it around now, or else the season's basically uh, heading towards the stinker. Cowboys tough defense, sure. Matt Stafford has not thrown a touchdown pass in two weeks. That's going to change. So that's why I mainly think this line, that's what, that's mainly why I like this game. Matt yeah. Stafford's going to turn around, and then the whole team turns around. Rams five, minus five and a half. Rams are definitely going to have some urgency in their in their game this week. I think the Cowboys, uh, I, like Cooper, Cooper Rush is only going to go so far, you know, winning these many games. I, I like that one a lot. Uh, I'm also going to take a favorite with my first round pick. I'm going with the New Orleans Saints minus five and a half against the Seattle Seahawks. Look, people are high on the Seahawks because they scored a lot of points against the Lions. This offense ain't that legit. All right. They're going to go up against a real defense in the Saints. Geno Smith is going to be under a ton of pressure. We've seen Geno against bad defenses do really well. And we've seen Geno against good defenses like the 49ers and get shut out. I think the Saints coming off a heartbreak loss in London. They're going to come back. They're going to be at home. They're going to be motivated. I really like the Saints in this one. I just I just think they beat the piss out of the Seahawks. Oh, yeah, I actually like the uh, under in that game. That was one of my uh, under uh, candidates. Unders are probably a good one, too. Even like I have no idea if Jameis Winston is going to be playing, but I don't think it really matters in terms of the Saints covering this spread. I think uh, their offense is definitely going to be different. You know, Jameis Winston likes to sling it. Andy Dalton a little more conservative. Either way, though, I mean, Seahawks are just one of the worst teams on both sides of the ball. 
I don't think they can stop a nosebleed. I don't think they're going to be able to put up any points. So, you know, less than a full tug, I'm down with it for the Saints. All right. Um, shit. There's two overs I really like right here. One of them I like... I like the, uh, you know, I'm just going to go over 47 and a half Chargers Browns. I, I actually did like the Browns on this, but I think for the over, I think that's the safer play here. Yeah, both these teams can score. Browns at home just makes me feel like they'll be able to score a little easier. I don't really ever worry about the Chargers scoring. So, yeah, give me that 47 and a half. I like that one. All it's been moving day. up all week. All right. I'm actually going to fill out my flex spot because I'm taking another favorite. I'm going with my 49ers minus six and a half in Carolina against the Panthers. Talked a little bit about it. I just don't see how the Panthers score any more than seven points. I think if they're lucky, they can find the end zone once. Baker Mayfield is terrible. This is a huge mismatch on the offensive and defensive line fronts for, you know, both sides. I think it's going to be a big Jeff Wilson game. It's going to be one of those games where Jimmy G only has to throw the ball five times because Niners are going to get up early. They're going to stay up. We were talking to Jack Settleman about this like yesterday or something, but I, I would feel confident laying like double digit points with the 49ers here. It's a low total. I don't think there's going to be a lot of points, but I think that's just because we don't know if the Panthers are going to fucking score. Yeah, I could see this is either a trap game or the, the 49ers win by 25. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's, yeah. It's it. And I know that sounds, uh, you know, like the obvious answer, but I mean, that's just, that's the truth. I, I think there's a really good chance the Niners win by like two and a half possessions. All right. I'm going to take an underdog and I'm going to go with the Detroit Lions plus three and a half against the Patriots. The, you know, the Patriots had a nice game last week. They got Bailey Zappi in or Zapp, whatever, how you say it, uh, you know, as a quarterback now. But Dan Campbell is, uh, he's just got too, there's too much grit. Too gritty of a team for Detroit. They uh, are just going to go out there and they're just going to sling it. They're going to throw the ball 45 times. And uh, Jared Goff is going to basically just try to put up as many points as possible. And I don't think the Patriots are going to have the offensive prowess to keep up with the Lions. Yeah, their defense is bad, but the the offense on uh, Detroit is pretty good. So I actually already have a bet in uh, siding with the Patriots minus three. I just think this is, this is their week. They've been playing a lot of really competitive, uh, all-around good teams. This is like their first easy matchup they've had of the year. Lions, I just feel like they... Even though they're competitive, they just, like, drop games oh, big to, time. to bad teams. That's why I, and it, I, I don't know. Three and a half. We got the hook. Yeah, I don't know. We got the hook, baby. Not loving it, if I'm being honest. But you don't but have you to. do you. All right, so I'm going to go with an under because looking at the board, there was really only one under that I feel even slightly good about. And I actually don't even feel that great about it. But I'm taking the under of 48 in Cincinnati, Baltimore. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's prime time. We know that prime time games have been slamming unders. Uh, division rivals, I think, you know, they play each other tough. It's a, I think it's going to be a physical game. Yeah, I don't know. 48 just, just seems high, even though these two offenses are really good. It's, it's not a third-round pick, but I'm snagging it now because I also feel like you probably have a play in this game if I didn't take it. Mm, no. No? Whatever. No. I don't care. <laughs> this was a bad pick, I know. I didn't have I don't give a fuck about it. I just, I, there was no other unders that I, I feel good about. This is just like, by default, the best one I've, I was feeling. That's cool. You know what I'm going to do? What are you I'm doing? I'm going to flex on your ass. Do it. I'm going to take the uh, Eagles Cardinals over 48 and a half. I mean, the Eagles are a high scoring team. Uh, the Cardinals are at home, so if they're going to want to keep up, they're going to want to keep pace, they're going to have to score too. And they can. I mean, Kyler's capable of it. And uh, I don't know if there's a double XP this weekend for Call of Duty. So, I mean, I didn't look into to it, but I don't think it should matter. Uh, over 48 and a half. This is just two, uh, two birds ready to fly. That's what we got. No, I like that one a lot. That's a good over. I'm going to go with a dog. I don't know why. I Man, the Jets, to me, are screaming they're winning this game. At plus three and a half, three and a hook, like, I'll take it. I have I have a bet in with their money line. Uh, divisional rival, Teddy Bridgewater. I just don't think you bet on Teddy Bridgewater as the favorite. I think that's the rule of thumb. You can take him as an underdog, but not as a favorite. This is in New York. I, Zach Wilson, I think, didn't look... Like, obviously, Zach Wilson didn't look great, but I think he looked better than what I was expecting. I think, essentially, this is, like, the Jets' week two game. I think you can even be... Like, it was Zach Wilson's first game coming off an injury, right? Like, I, I think he's only going to be more ingrained to this offense. I only think the Jets are going to get better from here going forward. I don't know. Something about the Jets are screaming they're not as bad as, like, I think people want to want to shit on them. I mean... They're bad. I think their defense is kind of underrated. I think they have a pretty nice defense. Yeah, I don't think Teddy is that big of a downgrade from Tua, but it 
I don't know. I don't know. This game this game is telling me Jets winning. So I'm taking them as a dog. All right. I mean, it's a home dog. It's always a good bet when you got to love dog. home dogs. All right. So I'm going to finish this. All. Actually, no. You have one more after this? I have one more. But oh, you're, yeah. you're done. I'm going to finish my uh, my draft here with my under. And I'm going to go with the uh, under for the uh, Bears Vikings under 44 is the line. This is basically, this whole line is kind of dependent upon whether or not the Vikings are going to have a good game. Because I don't have any faith in the Bears putting up more than 10 points. So, um, are the Vikings going to put up 30-something? I don't know. Probably not. So, uh, under 44 is kind of, it's kind of the only under that really stuck out. There's another one I was looking at, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to go that route. So, we're sticking with this. Under 44, division game, Bears-Vikings. I like it. That was actually the only other under that I was really considering, but... You know, like you said, I think I think the Vikings offense can show up in this one. Like Bears, I have no trust in in stopping anybody, so it was a little sketchy for me. But uh, I'm gonna go with my last pick. I need an over here. Uh, I'm glad that this game fell to me. I thought you might have some action on it because I know you like Houston as a dog. Thought about it. Yeah, but I'm gonna take the over this game. Forty three and a half. Uh, Jags need to bounce back in a big way. They kind of had a little bit. Of, it was, I don't think it was an embarrassing loss. It was just like a sloppy loss from the Jaguars last week. Granted, it was raining, but, you know, that was a big game for Doug Peterson. Trevor Lawrence with, like, five turnovers. He's yeah. got to fix that. I think Jags are going to be hungry. Houston, obviously, without a win against a divisional rival. They're going to be up for this game. I think two hungry dogs racing is a recipe for overs. Kind of a low total. It is a low total, 40, yeah, 43, 43 and, half. and a half. That's nothing. That's doable. Really like that over. Yeah, I like I mean, look, I told you uh, off air, I like the, the Texans plus seven. So, you know. Houston's defense is, is shot. Yeah. yeah. Jacksonville's defense is good, but like I feel like they have their moments where they just. Jacksonville's defense is good, but they're not consistent. Right, right. Boom. That's, that's what I was looking for. Consistent. Yeah. I also think Houston, Houston plays pretty quickly. As many holes as they have in their offense, like they. They get snaps going, so always good for an over. Yeah, for sure. And Davis Mills has no uh, no regard. He just throws it. He doesn't care. Yeah, he has a Love fuck it. it and chuck it approach. Love it. All right, so that's your five. Those are my five. Post your five in the comments or your one or your favorite lock of the day, your pick of ours that you hate the most, or I don't really care what it is, but something. Yeah, let us know what you got. This Sunday, as always, is a big Sunday card. As always, get prize picks, sign up, use promo code BDGE. As always, uh, so it's Thursday right now where we're filming this. The Broncos are playing tonight. Just want to let you all know, Broncos are going to win this game. So bet Broncos money line, bet Cortland Sutton plus 100 yards, and bet Cortland Sutton touchdown. That's my parlay I, hit, uh, I have, plus like 900-something if you want to, you know. You want to know my parlay? Sure. It's almost the exact opposite of yours because I got <laughs> Colts money line. I got Philip Lindsay to have over 39 rushing yards. Christ. I have Mo Ali Cox to have over 20 receiving Stop yards. The podcast. And I have Matt Ryan over 225 passing Stop yards. Stop the podcast. <laughs> That's it. I can't listen to any more of this. Take Sabat- down the channel. Saboteur. Um, all right. That's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. We're um, out of here. We'll be back next week, whether you like it or not. Thank <laughs> you.